Well, as the first full week of 2015 comes to a close, let's see what has been moving and shaking the markets. Andrew Grantham joins me down the line to share his insights. Andrew, as far as Europe is concerned, there has been news on and off the pitch, so to speak. Each day has brought a worsening headline from France. Meanwhile, the ECB is apparently studying models for buying as much as 500 billion euros of investment grade assets. Now, other figures had been rumoured and some analysts believe this has the potential for a negative impact. But what is your outlook? Given what we're seeing in, in Europe as, uh, when it comes to the inflation rate especially, um, you know, the ECB is going to use, and, and Mario Draghi maybe is going to use that opportunity um, to boost the stimulus there. Um, what the, I mean, the, the latest uh, decline in uh, inflation um, below zero, uh, mainly due to energy prices, which could actually be a positive for the Eurozone economy longer term. Um, it's not the kind of inflation or disinflation or deflation, in fact, that um, prevents people from going out and spending. If people are saving money at the, the gas stations, they're not going to stop filling their car up. They, might act, and they may actually um, spend some of that money elsewhere. So, you know, that's the kind of factor, and especially now that we're seeing um, some further stimulus measures probably coming through from the ECB. Um, you know, we're reasonably optimistic still on Europe for the next year or two. After a leaked document, there has been much discussion over the possibility of a Greek exit from the EU. Merkel's people haven't confirmed the nature of the report, but the message seems to be that this time it's different with regards to the Greece situation. But what do you think? Well, this is something which is now, you know, it seems to be coming up at least once a year, doesn't it? So it's... Um, you know, this this time round, is it different? Um, yeah, I'm not too sure regarding that. I think what we've seen in the um, previous episodes where the Greek situation uh, has come up is that uh, there does seem to be um, uh, quite a big political uh, drive to, to kind of smooth things over, to work things out, and to, to prevent a Greek exit um, from, the, um, from the Euro area. So, of course, it's US Jobs Day. The figures are just out. At 252,000, it's better than expected. The jobless rate also down to 5.6%, but wages are going in reverse, and the participation rate has dropped as well. To your mind, does this raise questions questions about the strength of this report, or should the Fed anyway be looking at other factors? Well, it's a, it's a common theme, hasn't it, in the, in the last year, where you get some very strong uh, job gains and not much in terms of wages. And actually, this time, it was um, slightly worse on the wage front. Uh, not much turned into a, a negative figure and a, and a downwards revision to the previous month. So, obviously, 1.7% year-over-year wage growth is, uh, is very weak at the moment in the US, um, but we are starting to, um, to see the, the wider uh, measure of unemployment, so this is the U6 measure. That's actually coming down and it's, it's only maybe about half a percentage point away from uh, levels which historically have sparked um, some wage pressure in the US. And the Federal Reserve will be well aware that when wages do start to, uh, to rise, historically they have accelerated reasonably quickly. Um, now, the Fed is going to need to see some signs that they are actually improving before starting to raise rates. So, you know, the wage numbers today um, may have people pushing back slightly their forecasts um, for the Federal Reserve. But if we do start to see those strengthen in the coming months, they're not going to need to accelerate too much before, um, before a, a rate hike is, is back on the table. Despite the one-way traffic flow and after a decent start to the new year, the US dollar is primed for some very short-term profit-taking. Now, there were hopes for today's figure to be the catalyst for investors to take some of the profit off the table. But what do you think now? You know, the, the, the data flow from the US isn't going to be as strong as it was, um, so there could be a bit of profit-taking for the US dollar. But if we look longer term, I think given the decline in gasoline prices and their boost to consumer spending, and given the fact that we are getting down to the sort of uh, underemployment levels, which can see wages pick up, I think, um, I think uh, a, a kind of a long US dollar position uh, from a longer term perspective is, is still the way forward. Andrew, as always, great to speak with you. Well, viewers, that's all from me for this week. Thank you for watching, and the team will be back on Monday with more exclusive interviews. Goodbye for now.